on this edition of Murray County Now. Get ready for some flapjack fun with Rotary Pancake Day. The Tennessee Highway Patrol tells you about its Drive to Zero campaign. Historic Murray County explores one of the pillow properties. And finally, get forged on Made in Murray. All this and more on this edition of Murray County Now. Hello and welcome to Murray County Now, Columbia and Murray County's new show covering the events, ideas, groups, and happenings in and around Murray County. For some people, breakfast is only served once a day, but for noon Rotarians, it's an all-day event. We spoke with Jimmy Couch and Robin Graham about this year's Pancake Day and its flipping good time. Hello, I'm Jimmy Couch. I'm a Rotarian. I've been a Rotarian for over 50 years here in Murray County. And Rotary does a lot of good service in the community. You wouldn't believe what we do. And one of the main reasons that we can do that is because we have Pancake Day. Let me tell you a little about the history of the Pancake Day. It started back in 1960. We uh, started the Pancake Day to raise some money to buy playground equipment for McDowell School. And then it was such a huge success that we decided we would do it every year. And we have done it every year since 1960. So you've probably bought tickets before, you're familiar with it. Please see a Rotarian and buy a $5 ticket, which enables you to eat all the pancakes and sausage that you like for $5. Hi, I'm Robin Graham, Noon Rotarian and President-elect of the Columbia Noon Rotary Club. Not only does Pancake Day have a rich history, but Rotary has a rich history of giving back to our community. We'll be celebrating 90 years this year of giving back and serving, and we're able to do that through the success of our Pancake Days. Last year alone, we were able to support 20 organizations and projects due to the success of Pancake Day. Everything from providing food at TWRA youth events, to providing and sponsoring youth sports leagues, to providing the and sponsoring the 4th of July event on the Courthouse Square this year. We're truly excited to be able to give back to our community in this way. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about the pancakes that you're going to eat here. They come from a secret recipe that uh, Bob McKay came up with, like, back in the 60s. Uh, this recipe, we, we'd separate the eggs, the yellows from the whites, and we only use the whites, which also make the, the, uh, the pancakes really light. Uh, and this recipe is secret. I've got the recipe in my lockbox at the bank, and we don't let anybody know. We've had a lot of people ask, what's your recipe? These are so good but we don't give it out. It's just for the Rotary Pancake Day. The Rotary Pancake Day is coming up. I have the tickets right here. It's, it's on November the 8th, it's on a Saturday, and it starts at six o'clock in the morning and goes till six o'clock that evening. Please visit our Facebook page, Columbia Noon Rotary Club, to find out about all the activities going on with Rotary, as well as information on Pancake Day. Recently, the Tennessee Highway Patrol has been out in full force on Murray County roads. Here's Trooper Chris Hanna with the THP's Drive to Zero campaign. Hello, I'm Trooper Chris Hanna with the Tennessee Highway Patrol. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Drive to Zero campaign. As you can see on the uniform, I have the word zero on my pocket. The reason that every Tennessee trooper has that on their pocket is this program is very special to them. The goal of the Drive to Zero is to work with other agencies such as sheriff's departments and police departments to obtain the goal of reducing traffic fatalities in the state of Tennessee by 15%. The goal of Drive to Zero is to focus on aggressive drivers, distractive drivers, DUIs, and seatbelt usage. Aggressive driving is when someone has road rage on our roads that's not thinking clearly or focusing on the, on the road uh, that may cause a traffic crash on the state highways. 
Distracted driving can be a number of things. Distracted driving can be use of a cell phone, uh, passengers in a car, eating, uh, fooling with the radio, uh, things of that nature. There's so many distractions in the car now, it's becoming a, a problem. DUI enforcement is something passionate by every trooper in the state of Tennessee. When a trooper arrests someone for DUI, whether it's under the influence of alcohol or prescription drugs, they feel like they have saved the life of a member of the state of Tennessee. It can be someone directly uh, as a driver or a passenger in the vehicle. It can be a single person or a family. And by doing the arresting of the drunk driver, they do feel a sense of accomplishment like they have saved someone's life. Seatbelt enforcement is another priority with the Tennessee Highway Patrol. The statistics show you that if you stay in your vehicle, if you're involved in a crash by not being ejected, you have a greater chance of living and surviving the crash. So we make it a priority to enforce seatbelt, whether it's a seatbelt checkpoint or just random patrols, whether it's in a school zone or whether it's on just a regular road, we take, we take that serious uh, also just as DUI and the aggressive driving or distracted driving. The drive to zero is important to us because we take it personal. Anytime someone dies on our roads in the state of Tennessee, it's a loss of life, whether it's an accident or whether it's by someone else's mishap. We take that personal. The knock on the door of a family member and telling them someone's not coming home is the hardest thing that we do as Tennessee State Troopers. You can find out information on the drive to zero. Just as I say, every trooper has a zero on their uh, pocket, right pocket. Ask the trooper about it. They will give you information. They will share safety tips with you. You can also go online to Tennessee.gov and, and look up the drive to zero. There's a press conference with Colonel Trott. He shares some information also about it. We'll be back with more Murray County Now after this. Once every three hours a fire death occurs in America, 80% of these deaths could be prevented with a working smoke alarm. Hi, I'm Lee Bergeron, Chief of the Columbia Fire Department. The men and women of Columbia Fire Department would like for you to have a working smoke alarm in your home. We have a program that if you call 931-560-1700, our men and women will come and place a working smoke alarm in your residence. We know by doing this, this helps make you safer and makes our city a safer place to work and live. These smoke alarms are brought to us on a grant by Governor Haslam and Commissioner Julie McPeak. Their goal is to place 20,000 working smoke alarms in residence in Tennessee. We know and they know by doing this, we can help save lives and prevent the young and the elderly from perishing in fires. Thank you very much. We're back with more Murray County Now on PowerNet 13. Adam Southern is back, this time on a field trip to one of the original Pillow Properties. Get ready for a blast from the past on this edition of Historic Murray County. Hello, I'm Adam Southern and this is another exciting edition of Historic Murray County. And today we're taking a road trip. We are exploring the Pillow Halliday House in Murray County. Beautiful home built in the 1800s by Granville Pillow. Nathan Vault, Murray County's master builder, was commissioned by Granville Pillow to build this magnificent home around 1845. The inside has been described as grand with woodwork completed by Nathan Vault. This is one of the three fine pillow homes that still proudly stand in Murray County. Granville Pillow had this home commissioned. He and his wife Olive lived in this home and they named it Rose Hill. The home is very typical of the time. The home was built with four rooms downstairs and four rooms up, separated by a central hallway. But this home is also unique in the fact that the portico is not gabled. The reason for this portico to be flat roofed is that Granville wanted the home to have indoor plumbing. He used the flatness of the roof as a reservoir to collect rainwater. Other than modernizing the home, the only other changes to the structure seems to be the back porch that was enclosed. Several of the original outbuildings still remain. During the Civil War in 1864, Generals Forrest and Chalmers with their staffs were guests of Granville Pillow and ate breakfast in the home. Captain Dinkins of Forrest's staff wrote, Mrs. Pillow provided a hot breakfast for the generals and their staffs 
Never before had I relished a breakfast as that one, and the gracious and elegant Mrs. Pillow will linger in my memory until the end. Granville and Olive Pillow both died after the war and are buried in Rose Hill Cemetery in Columbia. Today the home is privately owned by the Hallidays, descendants of the Pillows. Stay tuned for the second part of our tour of Murray County Pillow Properties and don't forget to come see me at the library. Hammering things out may take time for a blacksmith, but the end result is always something special. Here's Steve Williamson with Williamson & Sons to strike you with his unique passion. I'm Steve Williamson. I'm a blacksmith. I, uh, this is my shop. I fell in love with it. With this, with this trade right here, it's a, you either love it or hate it because you're gonna get burnt. And I, I'm now teaching. I tell the students when they uh, start, I can guarantee two things. One is you're gonna get burnt, and the other is that the iron's gonna rust. The history of blacksmithing in the 1900s, they uh, kinda, they were the, the famous, well, they were the uh, pinnacle of the community, I'll say. McCain's down the road here had one. Every little community had a blacksmith. Nowadays, most of the blacksmiths you run into are artist blacksmiths. I do railings, uh, candle holders. Uh, I recently redid the, all the ironwork at the city cemetery up in Nashville on 4th Avenue. Everything you see in this shop down here uh, was paid for by blacksmithing. It's, in my case, it started out as a hobby and now it's turned into a full-time job. I like playing with fire, and I get and I've talked to a lot of uh, different students that uh, they hold the, the the same passion that I do. Uh, it just uh, it's something in your in your makeup, I guess that it it, uh, uh, it has to be because when you grab a piece of iron that's uh, 1,600 degrees and it burns blisters on your hands, you have to have a passion. And what we're going to do here today is start with a half inch piece of steel and we're going to put a horse head on it. The fuel I'm using here for the fire is coal. I also have a, a propane forge here that I use, but I like coal better because I can get the steel hotter and it smells better. I'm starting to form the, the nose on the on the horse here. I'm doing what they call a half on, half off blow. Half of my hammer is over the anvil and half of it is on the stock like this, it's hanging out in the air and what it does, it forms a shoulder for the jaw of the, the horse. Horse heads are harder to make than dragons because nobody knows what a dragon looks like, everybody knows what a horse looks like. First question that anybody that's not been around this much is why do you hit the anvil like that between blows? All I'm doing is keeping my rhythm. I'm going to put the eyes in the, in the horse right now. And I'll do that. The eyeball punch. Is made out of a piece of spring steel.
see we got the mouth in there and you ought to start being able to see a horse head right now. After you've made about a hundred of these, you get pretty good at it. What I'm doing now is putting the ears in. Now I'm just gonna put it on the horn of the anvil. Like I said earlier with the wood handle, the wood hammer, you, uh, you don't want to ding up the metal that I just spent the time putting the lines in for the hair. So, but that's basically the, the process of making a horse head. And all, again, remember all the tools that I used with the exception of the anvil and the vise are tools that I've made. I want to do the best quality I can, so I'm a, I'm a little picky. I'm, I'm, I don't advertise in the phone book anymore. Uh, I do pass out cards, and I've found that word of mouth is the best, uh, best advertisement you can get. If you put out a good product in a timely manner, you'll get, uh, you'll get business. I'd like to have a million dollars, but I'm not, I'm not worried about volume. I'm worried about quality. And uh, there, like I said, there's a, there's a piece of me that goes into every piece that goes out of this door, and I want to be satisfied with it. To find out more information about any of the stories you've seen on this edition of Murray County Now, check out our website at murraycountynow.com and look in the show notes for more details. Murray County Now is produced by Columbia TNTV. Thanks for watching Murray County Now, and we'll see you next time.